your heart, in your soul, in your marriage, in your body, that only God can deliver you from. And, and there are some things that, that require God to have a distinct and decisive move in order for it to come to pass. You see, AA is good. But it's not perfect. N.A. is good, but it isn't perfect. Doctors can help, but they can't assure. Psychiatrists can suggest, but I come to tell somebody, I know a God. I know a God that is able. A God that is able to do abundance and exceeding this morning. Can I tell
fact, there it says he commanded him. And there's something about being obedient to the voice of God. And as I prophesied in this, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. I don't know how many in this building realize this, but when God begins to put a life back together, there always seems to be a noise. Hear me this morning. When God begins to put the broken pieces of your life back together, as He's picking them up, there always seems to be a noise. Sometimes it's the rattling pieces of your broken life. Sometimes it's the rattling pieces of your broken mind or your broken spirit. It might be your broken family or your broken marriage. But hear me, there was a noise and a shaking that was going on. And all I can say is, hallelujah, for a great and exceeding noise. I'm going to tell somebody, it might be the very noise that you make when you walk into the house of God. It might disturb your neighbor, but you got to go ahead and let it out and let them know you don't know like I know. You ain't been where I've been, and so don't let this bother you, but I've got to make a little noise. It might shake somebody else up, but honey, can I tell you, you need to let it out and say, God, you've been too good to me. God, you've been too good to me. I'm talking about the breath right now. Yes, yes. When God begins to breathe into you, and God begins to breathe upon you, He says, if you have what I have, if my breath is in you, uh, let everything that has breath, uh, if it's me that's in you, then go ahead and praise ye the Lord. Uh, lift Him up in the sanctuary. Lift up your voice. Uh, shout with a voice of triumph. Declare to the nations, the Lord all generations. Clap your hands with me this morning. When I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them above. But, get this, there was no breath. No breath. They looked like soldiers, but they weren't soldiers. They looked like children of God, but they weren't His. They looked like Christians, but in reality, they were just dried up bones. Bones that had some sinew, bones that had some flesh, bones that had some hair, but had no breath. They had no life. They had no power. They had no Holy Ghost. They had no anointing. Him is somebody. They had no Jesus. They had no authority. Why? Because they had no breath. The Bible says that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It'll come like a rushing, a mighty wind, and it'll breathe upon you. It'll breathe upon me. And when God's Spirit breathes into you, can I tell you, the anointing comes, the power comes, the authority comes. Why? Because it's the very breath of God that gives it to you and I. If we're going to have revival in this hour, we're going to have to get the breath of God in this place. I will tell you, it's right here in these ten verses that it really starts to get me. And I think these next two verses, I may just summarize this whole situation to perfection. In verse 9, he says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. So he's done prophesying to the bones. 